All right, we are back for episode 101 of Digital Divination. Um, That's not in binary, right? No. What would that mean? mean? What's 101? Five. Wait. Yeah. Yes, five. Yeah. yeah. So I know, I'm, I'm ashamed I had to think about that. <laughs> well, so we only have 99 episodes to get to that next threshold of 200. All right. Okay. Thinking ahead. <laughs> No, right. no. We, we've been doing the count forever. It's funny. Um, for the hundredth episode, um, Ryan kind of was a little blurred when he sends it out on uh, social media and stuff. One of the things he said is, after talking about you know how long it's until it reaches a hundred, they finally get there and they talk about it. <laughs> so no, because <laughs> that's what we talked about last time. Uh, Jason, I don't. You weren't around, did you? No, I you. I missed out. Sadly, I missed out on the one hundredth episode. And, did you listen uh, to it though? You know what? I didn't even think about we, listening. Oh, we talked about how much we missed you and how awesome a oh, guy you were, and thank how you. Really, right. we maybe we should record this as the hundred now. Just okay, fair what? enough. And then we'll okay. We'll flip. No, I, I've been I've been pretty busy thinking yeah. about you know a lot of life stuff, so uh, I uh, didn't get a chance to listen. And but I should I should listen to because I want I was very excited about the idea of the one hundred episode yeah. re- leading up to it, and I had some thoughts about like fun fun things we could do, but like then I just couldn't record it okay well, well that's your homework and then you get to provide right. us feedback on how we can improve it for for the 200th sure i'll i'll i have plenty of time to listen to it then i've got the good 99 episodes to get you that feedback <laughs> yes. that's right yes yeah yes. we'll get there all right before Easy. we get going um there's some sort of disclaimer that usually that's right before. i am an employee of wizards of the coast and my opinions are my own and not theirs Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't think we've missed that disclaimer yet. So I think well, I'm not supposed good. to, right? Yeah, I'm... yeah, I know. I know. I just, I actually put a written disclaimer on it as well when you're when you're there. Um, if we've said it, I don't know if you've got it in writing. I don't know that we need both. But the last thing I want is anybody saying you're treading that line too close, Ron. You can't be on digital divination anymore. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, oh, it's yeah. It's only when it gets posted on to the No Direction Network that I do that. On the YouTube channel, I don't think I put it that in there. I, I don't know think it is. Where, el- where else is this? We're not on any podcasts. Where can people find us, John? <laughs> well, well, your favorite podcatcher is is okay. going to get it. Just no Direction has a feed, and um, we're part of the No Direction feed. You can also subscribe individually if you want to this. On the No Direction website, you can kind of just select this one rather than get all of their feeds. And then, obviously, our, our YouTube channel. Um, which to get the easy way to get to it is to go to gamingdivination.com. So I didn't want to call it digital divination because I do other stuff on it, but it's gamingdivination.com. It's how you get to the YouTube. Uh, I guess I could put the disclaimer on the YouTube. I don't know that I have. Do you want me to do that? No, I don't know. I mean, I say it every time before we start. The way that the way that I get them when I the way I listen to episodes when I'm not on because Jason, I do that is. Um... <laughs> Uh, it's just because I've listened to them a couple of times. They're just always near the, whenever a new one comes out, it just kicks to the top of my YouTube feed. Yeah. So I don't even have to do any work or subscribe to anything. It just kind of happens. But the other day I was talking to, um, somebody at a function. She was saying, Oh, my, you know, my husband and my daughter love listening to this actual play podcast. And I'm like, you know, I'm in an actual play podcast. <laughs> Ooh. It's called Intrepid Heroes. And she's like, oh, let me see if I could find that. And then proceeded to not be able to find it on a hmm. couple of different places until I asked her to look at the No Direction Network and then she found right. it. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I used to, before we joined No Direction, even sometime afterwards, I was posting them individually and they were getting caught up, uh, caught by you know, Apple Podcasts and everything else like that. But one reason why I wanted to join No Direction is I didn't want to do that stuff. <laughs> so, sure. Fair. So, um, for this week, uh, it's been a couple couple weeks. Uh, how are things going, both of you guys? Uh, I'll go. I'll start. Um, good. Sure. I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, to talk about like a little bit about it, like I might be moving, uh, not super far, uh, though, in, in the near future, and then this past weekend. I was down in the place where we might move to and just checking out the neighborhoods and checking out some places, uh, gotten, you know, inside. We, um, stayed at an Airbnb and then we were looking up some local rentals and there was, it was one literally the next building over. Um, wow. From the Airbnb. 
from the Airbnb, which we hadn't known before we got that Airbnb. And we just sort of like we're scrolling through some new stuff and, uh, you know, going through like Zillow and, and, and Redfin and stuff like that. Um, and it was just like, wait, this number is it's the same street we're on. And the number is like two or four different. And I was like, I'm going to go outside and just take a look at it. <laughs> um, and uh, it was uh, raining. And so I was like, I was trudging out there. And I was like, walked in and I was like, wait. That is literally the next building over. Even though it was like four numbers difference, it was it was it was a little bit wild. So I look, looked at it from the outside. We didn't get a a, a tour to, uh, time enough to get a, a tour through it, but looked at it from the outside. Like, okay, well, I like the street. The neighborhood's kind of nice. We should look at this one. It has a lot you, of work. But if yeah. you get that one and people want to come visit you, they're like, "Oh, I'd like to come visit. Is there an Airbnb nearby?" You could be like, <laughs> "Oh boy, is there? <laughs> is there?" Um, very convenient very convenient very, convenient. very right yeah, next door yeah. um literally basically like essentially two units between <clears throat> the two spaces um uh, but but essentially the same the building next door which is kind of crazy yeah a lot so of work everyone will know mm. when jason moves because his background will be different that's true i might have a different uh area <laughs> we also saw this place and i got a it was a house that we, it was for rent and i gotta uh, bring this up because it was a, a, kind of an older house um, had a fun little like carport with a, you see this garage door. We're like, oh, must have a garage. And we kind of, we, 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 this is when we got to give ourselves a self tour and walked around inside. And it's kind of old, you know, uh, cabinets and kind of a, but new carpet and, and, and stuff like that. But we, you go into this one, you go into the one bedroom. It was like a three bedroom place. So you go into the one bedroom and it's like, oh, that's interesting. There's another door, but let me go into this, open that door and lead a couple steps down into the third bedroom, which also had a door to the outside directly in it. Um, it was this sort oh. of weird sunken, you know, it was, it was steps down. So it was, yeah. it was, it was a little bit down and it was just like, oh, this is, this is weird. Oh, this would be a great place for an office or in a gaming room. And I, I kind of fell in love with it a little bit. Um, the place didn't have a dishwasher, so it's probably no go. But then like, as we were leaving, I was thinking, I was like, oh, I should, oh, we look in the garage. Wait a minute. And then go on the side of the room and they're looking at a window and that's the sunken room. They turned the garage into basically a third room oh, room right, it, right, right and you can't tell that from the inside like sometimes you see these places where like oh, it's the garage door is just <clears> there on the right. wall and you know you're in a garage i could not when, if you're in the room you're in the house you could not tell it was a garage um wow very garage. cleverly yeah. done yeah it was well done if you love it though i tell you if you love it it's a good deal they make portable dishwashers yeah there wasn't really a ton of room and for not that even kind in of the thing. garage turned to bedroom no that would be in my <laughs> office i don't want to have the dishwasher in my office oh, okay um and it's also like the other side of the <laughs> other side of the house from yeah, the yeah, kitchen yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Would make, it would be very i'm just thinking it would have all the plumbing in there maybe yeah, electrical maybe I, <laughs> I mean there was a you know laundry room we could attach it to the item but it, yeah. it would have been whatever but you know it's got you know we you got to have a dishwasher I, we um, gotta throw your dishes gotta, in the we, washer there you go well, that's oh, no. oh yeah yeah all right no our place <laughs> Our place on Camino, the first thing we did is put a dishwasher in there. It wasn't a dishwasher. Well, we we oh. have this like get these sort of like eco friendly dishwashing pods uh, that sort of dissolve, right? Um, and mm -hmm. we accidentally uh, we got a got a subscription to them accidentally and kind of forgot to cancel. <laughs> so we have like way too many of them right now. Like they, they they we don't wash you know run the dishwasher that much, so they 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 came yeah. more often than we were using them. So we have way too many. We can't throw them out or give them away or anything like that really so we need a place for the dishwasher just to use these pods <laughs> to, to, just to fit the pods yeah uh um, i don't know i might be interested in some of those if you're just trying know, to get rid maybe. of them he we'll just see. said he can't give them away john i could give them away but it's, well i could pony up a little you know fair trade it's a it, it's a it's a um you know uh, what was i gonna say uh uh still it's nice it'd be nice to have a dishwasher so yeah 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 no no 100 percent. i'm i'm too old to want to go very long without a dishwasher. Anyway, sure. Ron, what, what's oh, up I had, you? Oh, man, I had the most exciting but long day yesterday. Let me tell you about this. So my both of my twins are doing uh, youth basketball, middle school basketball. And my son's team, I took my son to two games yesterday, and his team is objectively terrible. Like, they have not, <laughs> they have not won a game in two and a half years. Wow. Um, and so the first game they played was very typical for them. The score was like 50 to 10. Or something like that, and they do they because they haven't won. They s kind of celebrate what they have done, right? You know, he was yeah. proud about the number of rebounds that he got, which was higher than his last several games. Um, so they, you know, they they build up the kids' confidence, even though they don't win points wise. Um, but we were at 
that early game and we took a break to get some lunch before we go to the other school that had the other game later in the evening. And we got to that one a little bit early and they were doing a different game there. And it was with uh, two grades younger for our same school. And I'm asking my son, I'm like, was it, is, is the fifth grade team any good? Right. And I know your seventh, we know your seventh grade team doesn't win, but what about the fifth grade team? He's like, no, they're terrible too. It actually goes bad, good, bad, good. <laughs> uh, so fifth and seventh are both bad. Um, but we're watching this game and some of the parents and siblings, I presume, that were there for the other team, every time their kid, anytime their whole kid's team would score, they would just go nuts. They would mm. shriek, go team, yeah, woo, you know, shout themselves hoarse. Uh, get up and like jump around and they did it a lot because they were playing a team that wasn't very good and so oh. my son's kind of gesturing over to that i'm like do you do you do you want me to cheer like that for your team and he's like i don't know kind of i'm like <laughs> you got you got it buddy so that very next game i started cheering like like crazy every time they did a good pass or got a rebound i'm like yeah because i know all the kids names right i'm like you know yeah go you know name of kid etc cetera, etc cetera. um and so i'm just all kinds of getting into it and some of the parents that are around me are kind of like i mean you're at all these games what's going on and i explained to them this is what my son wanted because he saw this earlier game and so all the parent other parents start joining in too so we just start, <laughs> we start just, just going, you know, jumping around and shouting and giving them all kinds of encouragement. They lost, but they lost 59 to 49. It was the highest scoring Ooh. game they'd ever had. A lot wow. of the kids had record numbers of, of shots they made. And I mean, they blew all the, it was by any measure, the best game they'd ever played. And they were all really excited that the, parents had like cheered them i'm like is this all it's gonna take for our kids to do a lot better is enthusiasm from the parents um <laughs> and i for the purposes of this part of the story i have to explain that my my twins are black um but apparently one of the kids was on the court was talking to my son and he's like see that guy up in the stands who's just <laughs> yelling and my son's like yeah that's my dad <laughs> and this kid's Looks, looks at my son and looks at me and looks at, I mean, he just seems skeptical at least, <laughs> but, <laughs> wow. but anyway, it was, it was great. And I did in fact, shout myself horse. I'm still yeah. a little horse still today, but it was, I mean, they celebrated afterward and went and got ice cream. It was like the biggest victory. I mean, they lost by 10 points, but it was just, they were all so proud. It was great. It was great to see. Nice. Does that mean you guys are going to be doing this every single game now? What's that? You're going to be doing this every single game now? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I think we probably can't get flags or anything made, but I can get like <laughs> towels in the team colors to wave. Yeah, this is, yes, this is going to be a usual thing. They're going to have okay. to get used to that. Um, how All many right. games right. left are in this, like the season? I think there's only like ten, is all. I think still by the by the by this. I think in another couple of games. I think they're gonna win. I think they're gonna win one, at, at least one. I'd like we it. Maybe if I do fa face paint in the team colors. Oh, and... There you go. Paint your, <laughs> paint your son's number on your face somewhere or on your chest. That'd be awesome. Desk. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 I'm not gonna go that far. Oh, fair um, my son does get out of stuff. He plays the number twelve. But the way they do the numbers, the one looks kind of like a seven. And mm -hmm. one time that I saw a ref record a foul for player number 72. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not going to correct that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, what, cool. what about you, John? How's your well, weekend? The, the, the biggest thing I've been doing, been going on, I've, I've been on this kick uh, trying to build a digital tabletop. Ooh, and yeah. uh, I'm slowly kind of figuring stuff out. And so this weekend I was uh, getting images from various APs I'm going to be running and mm -hmm. finding a tool that I can use to display them on this thing. Mm -hmm. I have a, a small 32-inch TV. It's kind of left over from something else. And I thought, oh, this will work. So I bought 
something that'll work is feet on the backside that screwed in the mounting brackets and um put a I put a cover um plastic sheet cover, I had really thick plastic that used to be, you know, on Camino that the 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 table we have there, Ron. Oh, with the, have, it used to be over the map. Yeah, yeah. So I we replaced the old ones. I took the took that one and cut it to fit on the monitor um and inside to protect the screen. And so I thought I had it all set. And then I went to uh, to test it out. And that plastic is so reflective that oh. there's no way anybody who, who's oh. looking at it could actually see the map. So I'm I'm back to ground zero because that the surface each of those screens, even though they're they're okay, they do scratch. And I'm afraid yeah. putting yeah. minis or stuff yeah, yeah, on yeah. there. So I'm still still sorting it out. So I, I thought about bringing it tonight because I'm jamming a, a, a game uh, for Ron and uh, some other folks, uh, Fist of the Ruby Phoenix. And um, which is Pathfinder, not Star. Yeah. But um, I, I well, there go all our listeners, it. John. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> um, but I already have like the the first map is like a massive map, and I had already printed it out anyway. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just I'll try to get this thing set up for all the subsequent maps that will actually fit on a thirty two inch screen quite nicely. Hmm. Um, but that's. You know, I just kind of get on a kick for something and just start trying to figure it out. So that's I I want to hear more about your progress with this because in the you know the moving process, I've, I'm going to have to like shed some stuff. And yes. I was looking at some into a closet earlier, and I have so many flip mats. Uh, working. Oh, I got for boxes so long. and boxes of them. I yeah, yeah. Boxes, and I'm like, I don't, I'm not really gaming in person. But if I do go game in person, I was like, how many of these do I want to keep? And then I was thinking, well, I should probably do it, go digital if I ever go, you know, have, yeah, gaming in person, and get a digital table, and I, then I'll be able to like, I can download these PDFs and and make them into uh, maps on a screen or something like that. So yeah, uh, well, I'm curious so to hear nice how it goes. Thing, so I want to get some tips for later. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll say a couple since this is digital divination. I'll I'll talk about this a little bit more. Um, the nice thing about going digital is, you know, all if you have the PDFs of all the APs and org play stuff or whatever, those maps are really easy to, to take out of there and use yeah. one way or the other. They're really easy to do. But with the yeah. separate P, separate PDF, right? Because they have a, when you download them, there's two PDFs. There's the right. contents of the adventure right. and the separate interactive map PDF where you can turn the grid on and off or yes. secret yes. doors exactly. on and off. That's Those are super helpful. So it makes it really, really simple to do. Um, and then there's a couple of really easy tools to use and you don't like, this is a, um, just a HD, a 1080, um, monitor. So it's not a 4k, nothing special about it, but it only weighs five pounds. Hmm. The monitor itself only weighs five pounds. And, uh, you know, to carry it, it's about this yay big. It's, it's not massive. Yeah. The, the only thing that I think would be an issue to use it all the time, ex like for local conventions and or whatnot is power, right? You got to oh, yeah. be close yeah, enough that you can get an extension cord for the monitor. You know, I have a laptop, a small 14 inch that has a six to eight hour battery. So that, that would work for, you know, a gaming session, but the monitor does. And I actually thought about trying to build that out, but that's like for another, 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 another plateau yeah. of involvement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even sure. This seems a little small, a 40 inch monitor would actually fit perfect for a the, the usual 24 inch by 36 inch, inch maps flip mats that would be yeah. um, but it's a little big to carry yeah um i actually bought a new one to put in my garage costco's having um close out on this display a certain model they're getting oh, rid of right, and yeah and uh i got a 42 inch oled with built-in fire stick built-in bluetooth everything it was 125 bucks and Ooh. and that one weighed 13 pounds. It's still mm. pretty light, yeah. but a little bit harder to bring place. But that that's what got me thinking about this. I said, oh, man, this is so cheap. Maybe I'll buy another one because I, I've been thinking about building. Maybe I'll buy another one of these. Then I realized I already had this smaller one. So I right. thought I would try that one first. And then if that works mm -hmm. out, then then decide. So anyway, that, that's been my project. That kept me kind of busy through. Cool. Well, John, I don't want you to think that that uh, clear cover that didn't work for you over the monitor has seen has seen no gaming. I want to assure you that it has <laughs> because the first time we were up at Camino with my family, yeah. I brought an adventure to run and saw that had that plastic thing over the table. Yeah. So I lifted it up, put the whole 
flip mat, I think, <laughs> Jason, underneath it, and then laid it back down, and everybody could move their stuff around, and it was just, yeah. it was super convenient to be able to do that. Yeah, so. yeah no, I like, it. that's one of the things I, I use that plastic cover for, is I've actually put it over maps and stuff mm -hmm. that are, that I print so I can actually um, use dry erase and stuff on it. Right, yeah. Right, with like radi spell effect radii, yeah. and things like that. Right, right, oh, yeah, so yeah. it works out right. pretty well. And that's one reason why I wanted to put a cover on this, because I don't want to draw on the actual screen. <laughs> so I found some other solutions, I'll have to, but they, I, they cost money, and I'm trying to do everything on the cheap now to get it figured out. So anyway, um, speaking of, uh, I guess, gaming and gaming aids and doing stuff, uh, we did have a question. We, we actually have a couple questions from some listeners after um, Ron and I mentioned in our 100th that we need topics for the next 99 episode. Yeah, yeah. And so we've had a couple of people chime in. And uh, one of them is uh, Russell Sinclair, who's actually a pretty active listener and pretty active uh, contributor. He's um, written a couple of um, APIs for Roll20, one called Guidance um, that allows you to import Starship, uh, NPC, and uh, Monster. Uh, into right into roll 20 by cut and pasting the stat block either out of um, the PDF for the adventure or just right out of archives mm -hmm. and paste them in there. And he, it, it populates mm -hmm. your stat block and makes everything clickable. It's really awesome. It's one reason why I enjoy roll 20. Uh, and he just created something similar for Pathfinder as well. Um, I think he calls it Pathfinder guidance. Uh, and I think that's what he told me before. Sure. Super helpful if you're doing roll 20. Um, I, I've, I've actually been trying to do stuff in Foundry too. And now I'm tempted just to go with roll 20. Anyway, so <laughs> he, he had submitted a question to us a while ago. And then he gave a clarification uh, given the announcement of the <clears throat> Scoured Stars AP, which is coming out here in uh, uh, in a week or so. I yeah. got it already in my uh, to-be-shipped box from Paizo, but I haven't haven't received it yet. Okay. Um, so one of, so one of the things he mentioned is that you know imagine that um, you're an individual who just purchased uh, one of these APs, so the Scoured Stars, um, from your local uh, gaming store. Um, you're already in the middle of running a Starfinder campaign, uh, but you would be interested in leveraging some of this work that's already been done, kind of to enhance the session. Uh, what are things that would be easier to pull in from from an adventure like that? What's a little harder? How how might you do that? Um, and if you needed, uh, you know, a level range to, to do something, oh, this is just an example for us. Um, but you know, so one of the things I'll imagine uh, or, or suggest is that what if the thing that you're doing isn't quite at the level that you're currently gaming at, maybe how would you adjust? So, it's a good question because I'm, I'm like, can't like anytime that I'm want to run something that is not already an AP or an adventure, uh, in in a system that has a lots of APs and adventures, I'm always like, well, what can I, what can I steal from I I existing stuff that I'm not gonna run, or I'll look for, uh, even like third party stuff. I'm like, what kind of adventure can I run? It just makes the prep a little bit easier, and I can then, you know, right. start with have the baseline and kind of start with it and tweak tweak what I need locations, plots, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, um, it all depends on you know kind of what your campaign home campaign is and how you can right. um uh, you, you like how you can do other things because like, you know you might be in you know if you're in the middle of something big you might have to wait hold off and, and wait for like the idea to bring in a, another plot essentially um or you can really get into the nuts and bolts and really tweak the plot of the thing you want to bring in and and shape it and mold it into the plot of what you're already running right so there's mm -hmm. a lot of ways to go and and i think you can just how is a is a big is a big question getting into specifics but i think we can kind of talk about some generalities as as we go along here I think my, I absolutely agree. I think that, uh, let me back up and give an answer that's not entirely just a glib answer. Um, what's one of the things that you can do is get more friends and then run it on a different night, right? That's, <laughs> I mean, we, I've done that before, yeah, right? In yeah, the middle yeah, of something, yeah. like, here's a super cool yeah. thing. Well, let me get it. Okay, which of the campaigns I'm in is going to end soonest? And let me right, sort yeah, of yeah. put my marker in for wanting to run this, this yeah. entirely other thing. Um, but I think that the the good way, a good way to work that in what you're talking about, Jason, though, my less glib answer is this. Um, you talk about waiting for a good pause in the narrative of the ongoing campaign. And I think that in a well-run campaign, there aren't as many opportunities for that. 
because I think that if I'm running an ongoing campaign, I'm less likely to have a, oh, and now I guess you guys just don't have anything to do until your contact gets back to you three months from now. That might happen. But you can take whatever the key action driver of the piece that you want to use is and make it one of the action drivers of your campaign. Oh, we need to get this part. Well, in the adventure that I've read my homebrew campaign, I'm like, all right, well, they want to go talk to this Yusoki mechanic in order to get this part. And maybe they got to, I don't know, you know, fight a couple of, uh, you know, mob guys who are trying to shake him down. And that's just, it's a fight. And then they get their part. But if you've got something that's got a uh, a big, exciting race in it, you know, you pulled up Redshift Rally or something, you're like, oh, well, it turns out this person can't give you the part unless they win this race, you know, classic episode one, Star Wars episode one uh, interjection. And then suddenly you're off on this whole other race that sort of, it ties in. So that the, I guess the idea is what's the key goal of the thing that you just found that you like, and then maybe tie it in. Because some of those goals can be written very um, broadly, or they're easy to adjust. If you had characters who at kind of the right level for um, episode four of Dawn of Flame, the one that I wrote, the Blind City, which is this you know mysterious floating city in the middle of the sun that the characters are ex- are investigating. Whatever they need to get is just in there somewhere, and they otherwise find themselves in this space dungeon. And maybe it's not in a sun. Maybe it is. Maybe, but you know, you keep the the theme of we're exploring this alien place to get a thing. You just change what the thing is. Um, so there are some easy ways I think to try to get enough of a ten thousand foot view of what you just got that you like, and yeah. then stitch it in that way. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, you mentioned uh, Redshift Rally. And so a couple of things that I, I actually thought of uh, along these lines is oftentimes when you're putting together an adventure in the narrative, some of the things that are a little bit um, harder to, or more time consuming to put together are chases, right? Chase scenes, starships, race, chases and races, because there's a lot of different dimensions that you have to put in. You have to put in the DCs, the effects of terrain or if it's water, mm-hmm. things like yeah. that. Um, and, you know, the rules for those, but that's not something you do a lot. So yeah. if you could just take something like that, where, oh, you know what? We need to have a chase here. Where is there a good adventure where I have a chase uh, between trains or between vehicles or multiple cars or on the water? All these things that have been put into other adventure paths and or uh, Starfinder scenarios. And if you can identify one of those and, and plop it in, that that would be great. The other thing, and this is like for me, oftentimes the players want to go do something and I need an NPC in a locale, like a store, or I need, um, you know, a fighting arena. I need, I need a place with people populated. And so a lot of these adventures have those already pre-made. In fact, yeah. you know, in uh, Dawn of Flame, they actually have a whole codex in the back of places they can visit and things that can happen. Um, but independent of that, they also have stat blocks and descriptions and kind of what people are like. And so if you need something quickly, you can just grab one of those and say, oh, yeah, you go here and you just happen to do this. And these are the people you encounter and this is what they're like and this is how you motivate them to imitate them or whatever. And there's and I don't think you need to worry too much if it just happens to be the wrong level. It's easy to make things uh, higher or lower level, higher or lower DCs. Um, I've been talking for years about the secret level base table that's right in the Starfinder rules. Uh, and I don't think that people... Why? Does you have it? It is on page, because of course, I mean, I have the Starfinder core rulebook close to my heart. I always do. Um, <laughs> but the game mastering section, where they talk about traps... There's a big table, table 1114 on page 412 in my Starfinder core book, is the table on traps. And it lists for every CR the appropriate perception DC and disabled DC for traps. That's actually a good spread of DCs for any skill anybody's going to be trying in the game. It even has, because it's all with traps, what's a reasonable amount of damage at this level, what's a reasonable save DC for this level, 
uh, an attack modifier for something. So all these things are very useful when you're building traps, but they're also particularly useful when you're trying to convert something that might be a lower level to a higher level. You're like, oh, well, this was, I guess all the DCs for this chase are right around 20 to 25. That's the CR three to four range. My characters are eighth level, so I want to have in the 27 to 32 range. Okay, well, it sounds to me like I need to be adding seven to all the DCs. Off you go. Easy as that. Yeah. That table is generally probably like a skosh high uh, because uh, you you don't want trap. We didn't want traps to be found. So the perception DC right. to find a trap is generally on the higher side of things for 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 levels, um, and and maybe also on the reflect on the safe side might be touch high too. Um, but there are I think and I won't correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Of course, I think there is also a table in Starfinder Enhanced. That is sort of like a for good for skill checks um, and and oh uh, yeah, yeah sort of that like was written down. It was sort of a big thing. Like oh, let's write this down because somewhere along the lines, the DCs for tape for ch- for for check for skill checks was like a little wonky in somewhere. So this is the sort of newer version, right, the be- right, the right, me- right. the best version of that. So um, definitely, I would say check that out. Oh yeah, I've not see that in Starfinder Enhance because I get you know like a. I don't know, like a magpie with something shiny, right? Every time I open up Starfinder Enhanced, there's some like character so, option. I'm like, yeah, ooh, yeah. let me go read through this, right? That was. Yeah, the, but there's still some some GM stuff in Starfinder Enhanced too, even yep. if you're yep. not not a player. Um, that table, I think, is possibly repeated in if you go to like um, Starship Operations Manual Starship Chases. There's just a sort of a level based DC chart in that, and I think that's the same set of numbers. Or very close to the same set of numbers. You don't have, so they're everywhere. There's sort of like this. There's these hidden, these hidden level charts um, are everywhere. Right. And of course, you know, if you look in the back of Alien Archive, there's a lot of for mo- for creatures. If you're, uh, you know, we're talking about chases and DCs and skill checks and whatever. But you know, creatures can be different level. You can still take a, a Teshtari uh, that's normally whatever it is, CR three, and you need it to be CR seven. Just look at the numbers. You can figure out how to make the AC a little higher, the hit points a little higher, et cetera, right. et cetera. So to make it a make it a worthwhile challenge. Well, yeah, and each of the monsters I, is one of three types, so they even tell yeah. you which table to look at in exactly, order yeah. to raise it right. appropriately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you're doing NPCs, right? So that you have you have spellcasters yeah, versus exactly. chameleons. And stuff yeah. Like that. Um, I, this is a question, and I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about this or you're allowed to answer this. I'll, I'll, I'll vague, I'll vague, vague, on this. vague ask. Um, yeah. So, um, would there be some sort of spreadsheet maybe that one could use and plug in numbers for, you know, like a CR level for a certain thing that would help pop out this kind of stuff? Is um, something like that available? Maybe? I actually don't. Yeah, I mean, no. Um, ISO has internal tools for lots of things like that. Pathfinder 2nd Edition, there's a ton of internal tools for scaling things up and down that I got to play with. Can't play with it anymore. I'm not there. Um, All my connections to their Google Drive disappeared when I left. So now (laughs) I can't play with those tools. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess guess that's kind of what I'm alluding to is I know that there's internal tools for Starfinder. Is there any sense that that kind of stuff could be made available outside. Um, I mean, for we, simple things no, like because that. it's 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 the difference between the internal tools for say Pathfinder and the <clears throat> chunk of stuff in the um, game master guide and 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 I think in GM Core of how to build monsters. Those are the the how to build monsters is the is the sort of outward facing stuff, uh, right? And whereas the GM tools is a little more like some granularity, some more specific. Mm, things that you would do here and there to get it exactly right whereas the tools that we give to the public are close enough and, and are simpler so that they're easier to use so it wouldn't be the right, if right, it were right. ever re- something like that released it would probably not be the exact same thing and i can imagine that yeah. something like that will appear in whatever starfinder second edition's gm core is how to make monsters right yeah. um it's going to be a lot of the same inv- not a lot of the same advice but sort of uh, advice uh, uh, made for Starfinder that is similar to the advice in in in, in the Pathfinder stuff because it all is going to be the same math at any rate. And like, a lot of the numbers will be the same, but it'll be also awesome. right. Like, well, you're 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 running a Starfinder. Uh, you're you're writing a Starfinder monster uh, for a second edition Starfinder. Oh, you know Starfinder guns do 
fire and cold and the, the, the you know energy types are a little more easily accessible than in say pathfinder so you're going to want to keep that into account that kind of stuff yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, I, well there is a starship builder tool out there that's available mm. that actually works quite well I, there's a couple um, of them and, uh, and yeah, some of them yeah. just really randomize the stuff in ways i was playing around with one of those starship builder tools just to play around with it and at first i'm like why on earth is this giving me such a unusual and plainly randomized selection of components on this. But after I sort of hit refresh a couple of times, I realized, you know, that's kind of the joy of it, right? I mean, what kind of yeah. totally wonky starship am I coming up with here that is like <laughs> bristling with weapons, but like totally lacking in armor? I mean, there's a story about who put that particular starship together and all you got to do is make yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it'd be fun to see that for like uh, building NPCs and things. Yeah, yeah. monsters. There's, I mean, so like the like number like the exists like the stuff in the back of Alien Archives and what and, and whatnot. That all that that exists, and there's nothing <clears throat> stopping anyone from making a spreadsheet that does that, right? Because it's right. all te right. technically right. SRD tile information. Well, one of the sure. one of the things sure. about the internal tools, two things about the internal tools where they're not. It's not like you know the company's trying to hide anything from anybody. Um, but there are a couple of situations. Any Anybody who works with spreadsheets professionally has been familiar with the situation where you've got one spreadsheet that everybody's supposed to use and somebody in the course of improving it makes a slightly different spreadsheet that maybe breaks in slightly different lines and suddenly you've got a couple of competing yeah. spreadsheets and somebody's like, okay, no, 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 we're going to get back to one. And then they make what ends up being a third spreadsheet, right? Another version <laughs> of it. And so you end up with, with uh, slightly different things. And that's, that's a problem, right? We want to make sure that those internally aren't, you know, that you're sort of, people are seeing kind of the neatest presentation rather than kind of the sloppy presentation. Right, but there's also right, some right, elements right, of the right. rules that, I don't want to say that people necessarily regret, but we know aren't ideal. Uh, thinking way, way back as a freelancer, I would get the Excel spreadsheet to build first edition Pathfinder monsters. Um, and you could click in that spreadsheet, which feats you've given the monster, and then it would automatically update the other stats. It was actually quite clever, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to give you improved fortitude and the fortitude save gets the plus two. But they'd have sometimes like occasionally snarky notes in there. I remember next to the feet channel smite was something like, this is a terrible feat. Don't ever give anybody this feat ever or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, that's good. Uh, so we've kind of gotten a little far afield for this, but uh, we have been talking about how to, how to bring things in. Any thoughts on uh, Pathfinder or I'm sorry, Starfinder infinite, since there won't be as many, you know, kind of, or books and things coming out for Starfinder till second edition is released. Um, what about trying to incorporate that into your your game? Your either an adventure path you're running, or even a homebrew, or whatever. You mean just like finding something on Starfinder Infinite that you like and just using it, kind of. Yeah, and yeah, how? What's a good way to incorporate? Probably similar to what we talked about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all of that, that, but is, one, is it different? one thing also, I think you should make sure that everyone is aware that it's necessarily not Paizo material, third-party material. Maybe people don't care. You know, you got a group that's all, you know, having a good time. They may not matter. Like, oh, this adventure, is... we're like, not necessarily an adventure, but like, they hear some monsters that I want to use that aren't necessarily, they're third-party. Um, and, uh, you know, the, all that stuff on there, you know, is is of, of good quality. So you're not going to get like, oh, this is totally work and broken. But, um, you know, it might not, be, might not be a bad idea just to note it. Mm -hmm. well, with Starfinder Second Edition, well, I mean, we'll see when it gets closer what the um, how it overlays, uh, what the differences are between Starfinder Second Edition and Pathfinder Second Edition. They've talked a lot about intercompatibility between the two, which opens up the entirety of Pathfinder Second Edition for stuff that you want to yeah. do for Starfinder. The fifth yeah. adventure of the um, uh, Strength of Thousands adventure path. Uh, at the at the risk of spoilers, has you go to Mars and engage in a speeder bike chase across Akaton, uh, and engage in a speeder bike chase across Akaton. I mean, that's if in fact those those rules might be entirely portable and to from mm -hmm. Pathfinder over to Starfinder in order to find yeah. something that you like and can run. I know someone is going to take 
and once you know the second edition is fully fully out take any pathfinder first edition or pathfinder second edition adventure path and just be like here's how to run a then starfinder second edition like they like mm-hmm. there's already stuff that's that's taking first edition pathfinder stuff and how to convert it to pathfinder second edition you know, on and that's harder stuff. so yeah yeah exactly and yeah. this is just way yeah. easy and it'll probably be also the same way around it'll be like here's the starfinder first edition ap's how do you make them into starfinder se- uh, second edition you know stuff so all that stuff is going to be out there and it's ripe for the, you know, if, and if you're the type of person who wants to make that kind of thing, well, get your t- finger type and fingers ready because you're going to have to get there and get there first uh, when everything comes out. Of the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. It's, I remember, yeah, people talking about um, the, the release of uh, Starfinder or Pathfinder second edition and uh, some of the, the early writers, right. You know, so mm-hmm. they yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. knew what was coming and then they, you know, Based on the, some of the dev work they did, they kind of know where it went, and so they're trying to get right, out could, their own stuff you, really quick. Yeah. yeah, you could kind of like prep some stuff, like get an outline yes. going, maybe because you kind of know where yeah, it's yeah. going, and then just sort of like yeah. when it's out, just plug all the right numbers in or whatever. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. There was a. I remember that there was a before the Infinite program came out, there was a sense about the employees participating in that, and people who were doing third party stuff, but not on the infinite program could like have ideas and outlining. And once they got all the details of the infinite program, then just kind of go with all the stuff they can use. Oh, suddenly I can actually set this right. on Akaton or on Verses, And I, right. you know, so they could kind of prep that. And those of us internally, even though we knew it was coming, they told us like, here's, here is the date at which other people can know this. You know, don't do any work until the date at which other people in the public could know this, right? Right. Otherwise, you've got an unfair advantage. And so I remember getting everything kind of without preparing any outlines or everything, anything, getting ready to do so. I'm like, all right, well, I just happen to be really busy with work at that time anyway and freelance. But I thought, all right, well, as soon as I can, as soon as they say I can go because the public knows, I'm going to go. And feeling like, okay, I have to hurry up and catch up to everybody by thinking about what I'm going to do and then getting an outline and then actually doing the writing. The situation now is that if Pathfinder 2nd Edition is a good predictor of Starfinder 2nd Edition, anybody can be doing that kind of prep work. Yeah, definitely. Well, it looks like uh, we actually have covered quite a bit of ground here and started to think about getting ready for second edition, which is kind of interesting. I didn't really think we were going to get in that direction, but that's great. Yeah. That's good. Well, I'm John. And I'm Ron. And I'm Jason. And this has been Digital Divination.